J.K. Rowling has become increasingly deranged over the years, and I think that now most of her fans won't even deny that she's transphobic because she's just explicitly transphobic. Uh, she's been obsessed with trans people for years now. It's all she tweets about. But what's so funny is that, you know, she she reads the comments. Like, I tweeted to her one time, called her a garbage person because she tweeted out, some charlatan doctor who's a quack who recommends conversion therapy and I just called her a piece of shit. She quote tweeted that. So she responds to people who criticize her, which I love because, you know, I hope that all the comments that she sees hurt her feelings. But she was engaging with some people and um, she just ran away after she couldn't take the heat. It was really great. So it starts with her just tweeting about trans people, as she usually does. Uh, this man is talking about rape survivors. Oh, I should start with this. So this is a David Tennant quote that she's responding to. It's a tiny bunch of little uh, whining fuckers who are on the wrong side of history and they'll all go away soon. So referring to transphobes, this is a based comment. It's absolutely true. And she responds to that saying this man is talking about rape survivors who want female only care. The nurse is currently suing their health trust for making them change in front of a man, girls and women losing sport, uh, sporting opportunities to males and female prisoners incarcerated with convicted sex offenders. So she's trying to make it seem like transphobes are the victims when they are quite literally the oppressors in this situation. Trans people are oppressed. She is the oppressor. And also, she's at the tippy top of society. This person is nearly a billionaire who lives in a castle. She's not a victim, but she wants to make it seem as if anyone who is pro-trans is somehow like inadvertently against people who suffer from rape. Now, I get that she wrote a book about some murderer who happened to be trans or they were cross-dressing. I'm not sure what the specifics were. So she's fabricated this image in her mind that trans people are demons, but that's actually all fiction. She made it up. But now she's trying to take her fiction and apply it to real life and say, oh, well, if you support trans people, then, you know, and you think that transphobes are bad, you're talking about rape survivors. Actually, no, survivors of rape and sexual assault, they're not inherently transphobic. That's weird to say. That's extremely fucking strange to say. To try to pit sexual violence survivors against trans people, not only is that wrong, that is deeply immoral. But people responded. So this person says... Siri, show me an example of false equivalence. Um, oh, I just activated my Siri. Okay. <laughs> Stop listening. Uh, she responds saying, who are the little whining fuckers to whom he refers? Uh, and then somebody else chimed in saying, people like you who are trying to make the life of his child, David Tennant has a trans child, who is trans a living hell. He is not going after women. He's going after bigots like you and your ilk, but you're happy to twist his words to suit your narrative. She then responds. And by the way, just this is somebody who's extremely famous. Look at how much he's getting ratioed in these responses. 580 likes to 14,000, myself included. Um, how am I trying to make his child's life a living hell? Please give specific examples. And that right there is amazing because she thought that she she owned them as if there's no specific examples of her trying to make the lives of trans people worse. So this guy, Scott Friedrich, chimed in here. Um, he says, because your entire movement against trans people has propagated vicious lies about the very nature of transgender people, their struggle, and the value of their identities. You've emboldened some of the absolute worst bigots I've ever seen in my 37 years of life. She responded to him saying, the hate is so monstrous, you can't give a single specific example. Imagine my surprise. Now, here's when he comes back with the receipts, with multiple examples. So he says, all right, let's start with something recent. Here's you denying that the Nazis burned books on trans healthcare and research. This is recent, by the way. So in response to this tweet, the Nazis burned books on trans healthcare and research. Uh, why are you so desperate to uphold their ideology around gender? She says, I just how? How did you type this out and press send without thinking? I should maybe check my source for this because it might have been a fever dream. I mean, it's so ironic for her to say this because you could just Google it. Dr. Magnus Hirschfeld, all of his research, he was at the forefront of gender ideology, sex studies back in the day, and Nazis came after him. They burned his research. Now, somebody uh, pointed that out before to her and said that she was engaging in Holocaust denial, and they had to write this tweet saying, uh, it is wrong for me to say 
that J.K. Rowling engaged in Holocaust denial. And I apologize or something like that. I don't remember who said this, though. I think it might have been a journalist. But the reason why they had to make that tweet is because she threatened them with defamation lawsuits. That's what she did because in the U.K., uh, defamation is – like the bar to prove that is lower than here in the United States. But in the United States – that's a very high bar. You can't come after us in the United States. So he comes through with another receipt here. Or how about when you compare the modern trans movement to your fucking Death Eaters? So some of you have not understood the books. The Death Eaters claimed we have been made to live in secret. And now is our time and any who stand in our way must be destroyed. If you disagree with us, you must die. They demonize and dehumanize those who are not like them. I'm fighting what I see as a powerful, insidious, misogynistic movement that has gained huge purchase in very influential areas of society. I do not see this particular movement as either benign or powerless, so I'm afraid I stand with the women who are fighting to be heard against the threats of loss of livelihood and threats to their safety. Who, like, loss of livelihood? You tweet nonstop about trans people, and it hasn't cost you anything. You're just as rich as ever. You're getting richer. There is a game that came out last year, sold millions of copies. There's a show on HBO coming out where they're remaking Harry Potter for some reason. So it hasn't cost you financially. Transphobia is socially permissible in the United States and the UK. So what exactly are you talking about? But you compared them to Death Eaters, the villains in your own book. That's fucking deranged. He comes through with another example. I could point to uh, I could point to the several opportunities you've taken to point your huge fucking account at smaller trans accounts, mobbing them with hate brigades because you have absolutely no concern or how you wield your massive platform. And in July of 2021, Rowling tweets a screenshot of a tiny and that's what she does. So usually, if a tiny account uh, tweets something at a bigger account, they'll delete their tweet because you know they can't take all of the engagement and the harassment. And what she does is she'll screenshot their tweet so that way they can't delete it. And even if they delete it, well, her fans still know what, where to find them. Now, speaking from experience, I was on the opposite end of this. And I had hundreds of British TERFs in my mentions for weeks. Now, that didn't bother me at all because I'm already a public figure and I have very thick skin. I'm used to the hate. But if you're just a regular person and you have like... 200 followers on Twitter, that's going to affect you because you've never experienced that before. She couldn't care less, right? So uh, reportedly with around 200 followers at the time, yeah, so small account uh, of a self-identified trans user who mentions her in a tweet discussing gender identity. Now, it's even worse if you do this to a small trans person because you know what her followers are going to do. They're going to go in there and probably misgender that person, uh, attack them. It's going to be like one of the strongest transphobic hate brigades that that person is probably ever going to experience. But yet she doesn't care. She has millions of followers and she does this shit. Since Rowling did not remove the trans user's information in the screenshot that went out to her 14 million followers, that user is subsequently inundated with transphobic harassment and ultimately deletes their Twitter account. So they had to delete their whole fucking account because of JK Rowling. That's how much power she has, right? Um, now, as Lance points out here, JK Rowling went eerily silent after being presented with mountains of evidence. And that's the thing. She's like, oh, well, you can't provide an example. He comes through with three. And then she goes silent. Isn't that funny? All of a sudden, she's not talking shit because he demonstrated how the things that she does, that's making trans people unsafe. The way she talks about trans people, the lies that she spreads, the stereotypes that she spreads, the implication that they are a threat to rape survivors, that is making the lives of trans people Worse, she is endangering them. This is an incitement of hatred against them. And he just proved that. And she has nothing to say. Now, as this account uh, points out here, uh, J.K. Rowling demands specific examples of her bigotry, gets one of the most brutal threads I've ever read on her, and goes immediately into silent mode. Yeah. Because the evidence is devastating. She doesn't know what the fuck to say because she's absolutely transphobic. And not just transphobic. She's one of the most prolific transphobes uh, of our time. And listen, his thread goes on and on and on. So aside from the three examples, your bedfellows with people like Posey Parker, 
who's known to have neo-Nazis showing to her rallies to support her because your ideology about trans people aligns with Nazis, which is why Nazis and their ilk celebrate you as often as they do. More, more screenshots, more receipts. Of course, many of your allies are conservative and anti-feminist in many ways, including trying to limit abortion. But what does not matter, right? As long as they're anti-trans, you'll give, uh, your, you'll give your, uh, your support. Uh, maybe you shouldn't invoke the uh, the fucking Taliban when talking about people who are looking for safety, support, and recognition under the law for their children, and maybe grow some thicker skin when people call you out as a bigot because you say bigoted shit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know she said this about David Tennant. He's part of the gender Taliban. God, she is such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. You deny that gender from care is a boon. Uh, for trans people and that recognition of their identity can significantly bring down their chance of self-harm due to depression caused by their dysphoria and society's rampant transphobia, which you stuck. Uh, there is no substantial evidence to show that access to women's only spaces for trans women increases r risk for non-trans women, but you've parroted that shit for years, making it a cornerstone of your identity because you're obsessed with trans people now. I could go on, but I think I'll hand it off to my girl, Jesse Gender, who's got a whole three and a half hours talking about why you are absolutely no questions asked, a transphobic hate monger. I'm sure you'll give it a watch. Thanks for reading, Joanne. So this dude annihilated her. Kudos to him. I actually should give him a follow for that. Because that was incredible. That was absolutely incredible. He wrecked her. And of course, she has nothing to say. And I just want to point out that like the situation in the UK is so dismal currently. You have um, Keir Starmer, labor leader, uh, saying trans women don't have the right to use women's spaces even if they have a GRC. So just explicitly coming out as a transphobe. This is the Republican Party's platform in the United States. But the supposed liberal party in the uk they're just explicitly transphobic it's insane uh labor leader Keir starmer has issued another troubling statement on trans rights this time saying trans women do not have the right to use women only spaces even if they have a gender recognition certificate so what are they supposed to do what bathroom are they supposed to use like this is such a ridiculous thing to say uh trans rights have been used a political um uh, a political football to divide people with single sex spaces and the definition of sex in 2010 Equality Act wielded as culture war topics during the six week long general election campaign. In a new interview with The Times, Keir Starmer was presented with a question posed by author J.K. Rowling. Of course, it comes back to J.K. Rowling. Uh, she is using her cultural influence to push the most fucked up bigotry that the UK has seen in quite some time. Usually the UK, they're not as focused on social issues and civil rights issues as the US, but when it comes to trans people, they're all fucking losing their minds over there. I don't know what's happening. Maybe it's something in the water, but they need to get it together because this is not normal. Uh, so he was asked a question posed by JK Rowling about whether trans people who have transitioned uh, and have a gender recognition certificate can use female-only toilets. Writing on X, formerly known as Twitter, Rowling writes, do biological males, this is a transphobic way to say trans women, uh, she's just trying to like not affirm their identities, with a gender recognition certificate have the right to enter women-only spaces? It's a simple yes or no question. Stammer replied, no, they don't have that right. They shouldn't. That's why I've always said biological women's spaces need to be protected. This is... Such horseshit. Disgusting. Like, what a piece of shit. His words reflect what was set out in the party's manifesto, which says, Labor is proud of our Equality Act and the rights and protections it affords women. We will continue to support the implementation of its single-sex exceptions. So disgusting. So, yeah, thanks, J.K. Rowling. Uh, using your platform to make trans people's lives worse and then you have dipshit politicians like here starmer and the labor party basically going full republican on trans issues like what he's saying is controversial in the united states when a republican controlled state enacts that kind of a policy so for them to just say no this is our policy and we're the we're the you know we're the liberal party it's absolutely fucked up now uh just to kind of show you how bad the uh uk's democrats are uh, which they're far worse than Democrats. Um, and when it comes to trans issues, they're just in lockstep with Republicans for the most part. Um, but 
this dude got endorsed by the sun, or I should say labor got endorsed by the sun because, you know, you vote for the party in the UK, unlike the United States. Um, and the sun is a newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch. So he's, he's touting the right wing newspaper endorsement. I am delighted to have the support and the backing of the sun. I think that shows just how much this is a changed Labour Party back in the service of working people. And that is... I am That's some bullshit. And that, it'd be like if Joe Biden got endorsed by Fox News. And he's like, I'm so excited to have the endorsement of Fox News. How weird that would be to all of us. Well, that's happening in the UK. So, you know, America isn't the only country that's fucked up. The UK is fucked up, too. Um, but, you know, a lot of this drive that we're seeing towards transphobia, yes, it's also it's because of labor. But, you know, cultural influencers really make a difference. And J.K. Rowling has made a significant difference. And the problem is what she's saying isn't just contained to the UK because that would be bad enough. This is an international star. Everybody knows her. So she's having an effect around the world. And it's genuinely despicable. She is the Anita Bryant for trans people, and she'll be remembered as such.